okay. So, this is again you are familiar with the concept of uh, position and you are familiar with the concept of displacement. We have been discussing this from the first class. Um, so, and of course, you have also studied these before you came here. What is the difference now? Now, only difference now is that we are writing it in terms of the components of a vector, right? Pele, we were just writing it without the vector component notation. Now, we have vectors like for example, if r is a vector, it can be written along the x axis, along the y axis and along the z axis. Okay? So, this is what we have been doing so far. So, there are examples with this. Now, if you have two vectors, for example, you have a vector r 2 and you have a vector r 1 and you want to perform the subtraction of these vectors with the um, component method, you can simply say delta r is equal to delta r is equal to r 2 minus r 1. Okay? And then you substitute the values and you can subtract them. So, you have you will have the values for the x components, y component, z component of r 1 and you will have the values for r 2 and then you can put those values and you can subtract them. So, remember that subtraction is just like you will subtract the i component of one from the i component of the other. So, you can you are going to subtract the y component j, j component of one from the j component of the other. Similarly, you are going to subtract the k component of one from the k component of the other. Okay? So, you can look at equation number 4.3. Please look at equation number 4.3. What do you see here? You see that R 1 has been written as x 1 i plus y 1 j plus z 1 k. Similarly, R 2 is written as x 2 i plus y 2 j plus z 2 k and then delta R is the difference where delta R will be x 2 the i components subtracted of the two vectors plus the y components j components subtracted and plus the k components subtract. Similarly, if you want to do addition, you will not subtract them, you will only add them. Okay? So, this is quite straightforward. Then there was the concept of uh, average velocity, v average. How did we define v average? v average is the change in displacement divided by the change in time. In this case, we are representing the displacement by the vector r. Okay? So, it is delta r divided by delta t. So, this means if you have let us say a car that moves from a point A to a point let us say B, then you will draw the vectors r 1 and r 2 okay? to represent these two points and then you will divide those vectors into their corresponding rectangular components. So, this will be um, x 1 and y 1 and this one will be let us say something like this and this one will be x 2 and y 2. You have a figure like this in the book. Okay? So, you can use this to find the displacement. So, the displacement will be a change of these vectors. Similarly, you can write the velocity as v is equal to d r over d t, v is equal to d r over d t. Last time we did the same thing, right? You remember in chapter number 2? We, we wrote the same formula that is when I told you to be a little d over d t is called the derivative or it is called the differential. right? So, delta r over delta t can be also written as d r over d t and then there are some simple formulas that you have in the beginning of the book and at the end of the book. You can look at that. 
and if someone uh, wants to see a little bit more you I, I give you a link I've posted a link to a site which is called math is fun and there you can see a few simple formulas okay we're not going to use too many just the simple ones why are we uh, repeating this again because the quantities that we studied before we also mentioned displacement velocity acceleration are vector quantities now that we studied vectors now we are applying the same concept of vectors to the quantities of motion which is displacement velocity and acceleration okay so what was the formula for acceleration a average is equal to v2 minus v1 over t2 minus t1 right it is the change again in the velocity and we can also write this as delta v over delta t okay and um, again just as we said before this can also be written as dv over dt just like that If we want to write this in terms of the components, then we can say A is equal to D over DT into VXI plus VYJ plus VZK. So, this is in terms of the components of the vector. And then you can also write this separately like DVX over DTI plus DVY over DT j plus d v z over d t k ok. This means that a the vector itself will also have the components a x i plus a y j plus a z k if you want to write everything in terms of its components. Is that clear? The, uh, it's already what you've done before. We see that, but we have to systematically, with the same, just the same formula used, we are applying it to the concepts that we have already <coughs> studied. Okay? Practice the rule. Karna hai ghar ja ke. Okay? Don't think that I will remember all the formulas in one night. Sit down and remember. It's not something you memorize. You just practice it, okay? You clarify your concepts, study them, and then you practice them by solving the examples, the problems, and so on. Okay, Bilal. <coughs> 